So uh, the next I, thing I want to talk about is uh, there are still economic sanctions being put on Iran, Venezuela, and Cuba. Even though we're in a global pandemic, um, the Trump administration has continued to put and, and stay firm on uh, these economic sanctions on countries like Iran, Venezuela, and Cuba, and that's not what they need. Uh, like Iran is, this, this thing is, is spiking in Iran like crazy. And, um, you know, they can't get medical supplies like essential medical supplies, they can't get them because of the sanction. That's really fucked up. Uh, and it's, uh, let's just look at Columbia University professor Jeffrey Sachs has called this immoral and illegal sanctions. And they should be. This, these sanctions are 100% should at this point be considered illegal. We're in a global pandemic. You got to get, you got to take these sanctions off, right? Um, Center for Economic Policy says no doubt that Iran's capabilities to respond has been hampered by economic sanctions. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we're in a global pandemic and everybody has to do their part in um, decreasing and alleviating uh, and finding a way to really tackle this, this thing. So, uh, at this point, imperialism doesn't matter. Doesn't matter who you want to conquer. Doesn't matter what bullshit manifest destiny on a global scale you want to implement out into the world. Nobody gives a shit about that. Nobody, first of all, no one's ever given a shit about that. Um, so, you know, it's time to let that go. It's time to fucking move on, grow up and move on from that. Right. And what this also does is it exposes the fact that economic sanctions are warfare. This is economic war is what it is. We are in a state of a global pandemic and you won't allow a country to get necessary medical resources. How, how is that? How is that not callous in an act of war? Right now, in a pandemic, what needs to happen is that there needs to be a mutual understanding and a treaty to be put into place so that everybody can help each other. That's what needs to happen, right? We have to put these xenophobic, hate-filled ideas, these, you know, ideas of manifest destiny that this other country, we own their shit, none of that, no, who cares? People are dying in that country. A lot of people have been exposed to this virus. They don't have a way to contain it. Um, they're doing everything that they can, but the, the people that are showing symptoms and, and you could be asymptomatic and spread the virus, right? The people that are showing the symptoms, um, and the people that are actually getting sick because of it, well, they don't have a way to, to get through it. They just don't because they don't have a way to get supplies and necessary equipment. Because the United States has said, well, you've been bad. You didn't let us incite a coup. You, you, you got mad whenever we illegally murdered your general on a peace mission. That, that was bullshit. You should have just let us kill whoever we wanted. This is, this is, we're, we're mad at you. And now you, you don't get your medicine because America is mad. Look, if we get to that point, right, where we look at a global pandemic and we can say that we're going to put a treaty in place and we're going to chill out and we're going to make sure that we, we can all help each other out in the way that we need to, we're all going to listen to each other, we're all going to figure out what works, what doesn't, we're going to do this on a global scale because everywhere it's, we're, we're being affected on a global, global scale, uh, it will probably start revealing once and for all, that, uh, that, uh, that, that war is completely unnecessary. There's virtually no need for it. And uh, what we need is more global cooperation, uh, which, is just a, which is just far more logical and beneficial to everybody, right? Um, it would probably eradicate racism. It would probably eradicate... Uh, uh, xenophobia and and not understanding another culture and where they come from and how to 
uh, you know, uh, assimilate to each other, uh, be respectful to each other, um, look at different ideas. And instead of looking at different ideas and saying, well, I got to kill that different idea, we can go, hmm, that's cool. I get, I mean, they can, they have their idea over there. I have my idea over there. We still seem to be working together. Uh, you know, the, the, the big stuff would matter a lot more. Um, keeping these sanctions, not being, not letting them get their medical supplies and not being able to contain the virus the way that I think they need to contain it, the way that I think they're looking to contain it. Uh, it's, it's going to make this worse. These economic sanctions are going to make this worse because now the virus is going to spread a lot faster and a lot more. Um, you know, that's the domino effect right there. That's where the domino effect really lies. Uh, and you know, based on all of this information, it's very easy to see why Iran believes that they're uh, under some sort of biological attack, that this is some sort of biological warfare that's being used against them, right? Because the sanctions are being put in place. They can't help their people. The United States is holding them back. Uh, and, uh, and this thing is spreading around their country like wildfire, and they don't know what the fuck to do. They don't know how to help, and, it's, and they're going nuts. They're going nuts. They're like, what the fuck? What, you know, what is? And, and of course they believe it. Kim Iverson did a video about that where, where there were stories coming out of Iran, like top officials saying that this is some kind of bioweapon that has been released specifically to attack Iran. And it's looking like it's around the world. Uh, but all the countries that have had uh, major effects, like over 10,000 people infected or something like that, are all countries that the United States is... Um, less than friendly with, you know. I mean, when you're going to put that in place, right? Like, it makes sense as to why somebody would believe that. Especially in a moment of that much stress and desperation. Like, your mind thinks about those things. And now they're thinking about those things on a, on a country-wide scale. Because, like, the, yeah, I mean, if the United States was not sending this, you know, trying to... Um, trying to collapse the country so that they can come in and be like, we are your saviors with democracy, voting. Like, if they weren't going to do... Then they would have been like, yeah, we're going to lift the sanction because this is a crazy fucking situation that we're all in. Now, for everything I've said in the last few minutes, you can replace the word Iran, uh, virtually for everything, you can replace the word Iran with Venezuela and Cuba, and the same thing applies. Cuba started to see some cases, Venezuela is seeing some cases, um, and these economic sanctions on these countries are not allowing them to get the resources that they need. Um, you know, Venezuela specifically was, they don't, they got their money lost. The, the sanctions on them, Sitco is, is a Venezuelan company, um, and they couldn't get like, billions of dollars worth of... Uh, um, income for their country and uh, that, I mean that's just bullshit total bullshit right there uh, so yeah I think that at this point um, a lot of that doesn't matter you know taking care of each other matters uh, coming up with a viable solution for this pandemic matters. Uh, but your war and your uh, need to, you know, be in power or push a narrative that you are the um, strongest country in the whole world, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. These narratives are no longer very important. What's important is helping each other out and making sure uh, that we contain this thing and can move forward. We can get to a point where, um, you know, we can get back to our lives the way that we want to get back to our lives. That's, that's what matters at this point. So Stay safe. Um, take care of each other. Uh, don't hoard shit. Don't do that. Um, 
you know, if if you got an elderly neighbor, make sure they're they're doing okay. Make sure they're kind of staying educated on what they need to stay educated on. Help them out if they need groceries and and things of that sort. Um, and uh, what else? Oh, uh, there's lots of people that need help, not just in the artist community, but in the in the service industry as well. Uh, if if you are particularly feel inclined, feel moved uh, by the spirits in the universe or whatever it is. Uh, to, to become a sustaining member of what I'm doing or make a one-time donation uh, to what I'm doing, um, pl please go to ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com slash donate. Uh, you can make a one-time donation there. You can make a sustaining membership uh, patronage there and uh, and and you know uh, if you can I totally understand it's a tough time for everybody uh, but the biggest thing you can do is like subscribe share get the word out about these videos uh, show it to people that you know are uh, are either interested in this topic or or would like to be interested in this topic would like to get something different um, so uh, yeah sharing is is a big way to to help uh, and hopefully when all this stuff is done, I hope to see you guys, uh, at a live show, uh, keep up to date by following my website and all of my social feeds. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in and, uh, and we'll see you tomorrow. See you on the road.